high again. In the mid-80s, after the CD successfully introduced to the market, came up the ID, the tape cassette that has been in the market since 1966, should be also replaced by a digital one. For this, Sony, Onkyo and Denon had the basic technology, the PCM adapter, which was also used for CD mastering. So the next step was to create the tape recorder itself. Sony started to modify its own 8mm video standard. Philips also created its own version of the digital cassette, but they are kept the basics from the compact cassette, which was a logical step of them. This is called S. -dot, stationary Head Digital Audio Tape. The marketed name is DCC. I will link the video about it. Sony chose the rotary head, which was quite different from the previous sound recording systems. This is R. -dot, rotary Head Digital Audio Tape. The cassette's dimensions 73 by 54 by 10.5 mm. And the tape is only 4 mm wide. The cassette cannot be turned, so only one sided. 16 bits, 32, 44.1, and 48 kHz sampling rates. Two channels and possible other data to be added next to the audio. These bits called subcodes, same as on the audio CD. They can perform various functions, such as the time code, the absolute time, ID, clock, and still enough capacity left for other functions to be possible to add, but that's never happened. The total data rate is 9408 megabit per second. The tape speed is 8.15 mm per second. The head drum wraps around the tape at 90 degrees, so causes less wear. The rotation speed of the head is 2000 rpm. The two heads are offset to each other to reduce the crosstalk. There is an unused strip on both edges for safety reasons. Also an ATF signal is recorded, auto track following, similarly what Philips used in video 2000. The frequency response is between 2 and 22 kHz. It was first presented in 1986, appeared on the market 1987, and the first device available for purchase was the Sony DTC-1000ES at a clearly visible price. For example, the DTC-2000 was still $2,500 in 1994. DOT is using double read Solomon error correction, which is doubles the 37.5% of data and saves it to a 10-bit data sequence. If I play it back, it will compare and fix the errors. If the error is greater than this, that part will be muted. In addition, the interleaving technology as an extra protection is also available for error correction. In the 80s, development made easier copying and recording music from vinyl records, from radios and between cassettes as well. Since their quality is improved. This started to bother the publishers, so they started to pressurize the manufacturers. When the CD was released, it was the only digital format, so they accepted easy. But when the Sony came out with the dot and realized that it's possible to copy of the same quality as the CD and even create more copies, keeping the original quality, that blew their mind up and started to protest against. They also argued that would kill the market, so they didn't let DOT to be marketed in the United States. Sony, on the other hand, refused to hide the signal in the recording, because it would be heard, which is called copy code, and were originally invented for the audio CD. 
The dispute between the USA and Japan has become quite heated. Sony acquired CBS Records in 1988, Columbia Broadcasting Systems. With this purchase, one of the biggest resistors was eliminated. The SCMS, Serial Copy Management System, became the solution. One digital copy permitted. This is the 2-bit procedure, which was also used for the minidisc and DCC. And they also introduced a mandatory copyright consent on blank media. So in 1990, the United States also authorized the distribution of that. Pre-recorded tapes was hardly ever released on the format. The first in 1987, The Guitar and Other Machines, was an album by a British punk band from the Rotti Column. A few more albums in the next years been released, but it wasn't significant at all. Dot essentially ran on four lines. Home decks for hi-fi systems with analog and digital output and input. The Walkman type versions, which were also able to record. A professional portable called field recorders. These are also recorded and played but they didn't necessarily had a digital input and the main professional line. Well, this was the most successful for that, although it wasn't the original purpose. They had professional balanced connections, digital and analog input and output, and were even suitable for recording timecode with editing functions. This is the Panasonic SV3800, a professional deck, and it has a home version, the Panasonic or Technics DA10. At the first look, they are very similar, but there are some differences. Both can be controlled remotely, and probably they have the same remote control. The slider next to the sensor is a timer on the home tape recorder, while on the professional version, the sampling rate settings 45.1 or 48 kHz. The rotary buttons are also different. On the home version, a balance and the recording volume control. The Pro only has the recording volume control, but separately for left and right channels. On the back of the home version, there is an RCA stereo input and output, there is an optical and coaxial input and output. And the professional version has an XLR analog input and output, XLR optical and coaxial digital input and outputs. It also has a controller slot. Interesting, but the SV3700 is a little closer to the home version. It has fewer digital connections, the XLR and the coaxial digital only. The interior is also different. I found a picture of the inside of the 3800. When is this assembled?
Dot also has a computer data storage version, which is called DDS, Digital Data Storage. This can be built into a 5.25 inch rack. The target was to make a security copy of the daily work, so a kind of offline storage. It uses the same helical recording as the audio version. Several versions have came out over the years, the DDS-1 in 1989, with a capacity of 1.3 gig, if compressed 2.6 gig. This is also applied to all later versions, they can hold twice as much data when compressed. The DDS-2 4 GB, the DDS-3 12 GB, the DDS-4 20 GB, but it's also called DOT40, which was the compressed capacity. But from here all followed this 5th generation DOT72, 36, 72 GB, 6th generation DOT160, 80, 160 GB, 7th generation in 2009, 160, 320 gigabyte. The eighth generation would target the uncompressed 320 gigabyte, but the project has been cancelled. In the end, that was only moderately successful, which was partly due to its price, mostly used by studios because it was too expensive for home use, especially compared to CD, which became more and more cheap. Also, in the meantime, the CDR was published, which could be used to copy the audio CD content easily and quickly and faster than real-time. From 2005, started to took place the file sending over the internet, so no need tape. And because it can be used immediately to work with, the production became significantly faster with it. Similarly, as in the video technology, instead DigiBeta and HDCAM tapes, enough to send a file. The last death recorders manufactured in 2005. According to some information, Sony sold roughly 660,000 DOT units during its entire life cycle. Thank you for watching, please press like, subscribe, see you next time, bye!